The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Six tables. Scientific tests prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarette. Yes, Lucky Strike is milder, and science provides the proof. Test after test produced conclusive evidence of Lucky Strike's greater mildness. But that's not all. These scientific tests are confirmed by independent consulting laboratories, and they prove Lucky Strike, mildest of six major brands tested. There's no doubt when you light up a Lucky, you get a smoother smoking, milder tasting cigarette, and you enjoy the rich taste of fine tobacco because... L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, fine, light, naturally mild tobacco that gives you more real deep-down smoking enjoyment. So for the rich taste of fine tobacco, for smoothness and mildness, light up a Lucky. Yes, prove to yourself what scientific tests prove. Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarettes. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. <laughs> Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in a couple of weeks now, Jack Benny will be traveling throughout the country on a personal appearance tour. So naturally, he feels that he should brush up on his violin. At the moment, Jack is home waiting for his violin teacher to arrive. I can't understand it. Professor LeBlanc was supposed to be here an hour ago. Boss, sit down and relax. He'll be here pretty soon. Well, why can't he come on time? This is important, Rochester. I'll soon be out on a personal appearance tour, and I haven't played my violin in front of an audience since I was at the Palladium in London. I want to get my fingers back in shape. Why? What did they do to him? <laughs> They didn't do anything to him. You know, you may not know it, but men like Heifetz and Isaac Stern put so much importance on the dexterity of their fingers that they massage them with creams and lotions, you know. That's because their livelihood depends on the nimbleness of their fingers. I know what you mean, boss. My cousin goes through the same thing. Oh, is your cousin a musician? No, he's a milker at Ador. <laughs> A milker? There's never a rough pull in my cousin. <laughs> Rochester, look, Rochester, I hired you as a butler. If I wanted to be entertained, I'd have gotten Georgie Jessel. <laughs> anyway, I can't understand... Oh, that must be the professor now. Well, Professor LeBlanc, I've been waiting for you. Hello, Monsieur Benny. I'm sorry that I am late. That's all right. Uh, have you had lunch? I never eat before I give you a lesson. <laughs> oh, shall we, uh, shall we go in the den? We. Oui. By the way, Professor, I had new hair put on my violin bow. Is it good there? Oh, yes, yes. The man at the music store said it won the Kentucky Derby twice. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I am a violin teacher, not a straight man. <laughs> Let us commence with the lesson. Uh, yes, Rochester, hand me my violin, will you? Here you are, boss. Now, give me a running start. <laughs> uh, professor, shall I, uh, shall I start with the, uh, minuet? Oui. Oui, the minuet. No, 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 Monsieur Benny. I have told you so many times. It isn't that. Da, 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 da. Yeah. You must slide. Slide. Da, da, da. Oh, oh. Perhaps it would be better if first you did some exercises. Yeah, very well. One and two and three and four. I wish I was in Singapore. <laughs> Bend your wrist and slide your finger. Pull the switch, don't let me linger. <laughs> that is enough, Monsieur Benny, that is enough. You may try the menuet again. 
And don't forget to slide. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> The bow flew out of my hand. <laughs> now, where did it go? It is stuck in the ceiling. <laughs> oh, yes. I'll yes. get it. No, oh, but, Professor, you're too short. You can't reach it. I was thinking of standing on your violin. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I'll get it myself. Rochester, answer the door. Yes, boss. Even I sound smooth than he does. Coming! Hello, Rochester. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Come on in. Mr. Benny's in the den. Is he reading? Oh, he's taking a violin lesson. <laughs> Yeah, and you ought to hear him play. It sounds like he's plucking a live chicken. <laughs> <laughs> well, I came over to show Mr. Benny this new copy of Look Magazine. His picture's on the cover. And so is yours, Rochester. Mine? Yes. I just got it at the corner newsstand. See? Well, Zazu Zaz, ain't I cute? <laughs> <laughs> you sure look sporty there, Rochester. Is that a cane you're holding? No, that's the handle of a broom. What? As soon as the picture was taken, I had to get right back to work. That's all I do around here. Scrub the floor, do the laundry, wash the dishes, make the bed. Well, Rochester, I know you work hard, but who else could Mr. Benny get to do it? Georgie Jessel. <laughs> well, I know Mr. Benny would like to see the magazine. I'm going to take it in to him. Jack. Jack. Evelyn. Huh? <laughs> Mary. Uh, can't you see I'm in the middle of a lesson? I know, Jack, but I thought you might like to see this. Well, look, I'm on the cover of Look Magazine. I think it's an awfully good picture. Don't you, Professor? Mm. On paper, he looks so harmless. <laughs> Well, that's because of my blue eyes. See? Underneath, I'm a regular Mickey Rooney. <laughs> and Jack, what? in the story about you, there's a line that says, Jack Benny is the greatest comedian the world has ever known. It says that about me? Yes. Jack, are you sure you haven't been down to the corner newsstand? Why? That line is written in pencil. <laughs> How do you like? I told Rochester to use ink. Now, Mary, would you mind waiting in the living room so I can finish my lesson? Okay. How did Mr. Berry like the picture? Fine, Rochester, but he said he should have used ink. Oh, you found out? Yes. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? You should see what I did to the copies on Central Avenue. <laughs> I don't think that you... Oh, I'll get it. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Livy. What are you doing here in Fort Knox? <laughs> oh, nothing in particular. Where's Jackson? He's in the den plucking a chicken. Oh, taking a violin lesson, huh? Yeah. I'll see you around. Oh, I know you don't. Come on in. Say, Phil, I noticed that new Cadillac sedan you drove up in. It's a beauty. Yeah, Dallas's. Oh, then the maroon convertible is yours. No, that's Alice's, too. Oh, then that little English car with the right-hand drive Alice's. Is... <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, Phil. If she owns all those things, what have you got? Alice. <laughs> well, Liv, I better go in the room. I want to see the old man a minute. I'll... Phil, 
Why don't you walk right in? It's like going into a cold pool. You can't take it all at once. <laughs> well, here goes, Liv. Professor, do you think... Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, cover boy. Bonjour, Mr. Halley. Ah, Professor LeBlanc. Bon viek, tu par rig, far ma see. What does that mean? Good elf to all from Rexall. <laughs> Phil, I didn't know you could speak French. Sure, Jackson, I know two sentences. That's one of them, and the other one always gets my face slapped. <laughs> look, Phil, I'm taking a violin lesson. What do you want to see me about? Oh, I want to talk to you about this personal appearance tour we're going to make. Now, look, I thought that in arranging the show, I'll open up with 20 or 30 courses if that's what I like about the South, and you come walking Hold it, Phil, slow. hold it. Now, wait, that's one song you're not going to sing on the tour. Now, wait a minute, Clyde. You're prejudiced against the song. Let's no. ask someone who's imperial. That's impartial. <laughs> I don't care what it is. Hey, Professor LeBlanc, what do you think of That's What I Like About the South? Mon dum cochon et les lettres tout de tout le monde. Hey, ain't that a coincidence? That's the line that always gets my face slapped. <laughs> That's what I thought. Now, Phil, you better start rehearsing your musician. You know, we play our first show in Pasadena on May 10th, and then we open in Wichita, Kansas, May 16th. Kansas? That's a dry state, ain't it? Well... <laughs> Not, not anymore. Oh, good. I've got two trunks I thought I'd have to leave at the border. <laughs> Phil, Phil, B-A-R-R-M-O-P-P, Barmop. <laughs> We're opening in Wichita on the 16th, regardless. Okay, okay, Jackson. See you later. All right. Mr. Benny, please. I haven't got all day. Let us finish the lesson. Okay. Oh, uh, tell me, Professor, do you really think you can make a great violinist out of me? Well, I think I can do something, but it will take time. How old are you? <laughs> Why? How much time have we got left? <laughs> oh. Well, look, Professor, if you don't feel that you're capable of teaching me the violin, why do you keep taking money from me? I feel that that in itself is an accomplishment. <laughs> now, who's that in there playing the piano? Dennis! Dennis, I'm taking a violin lesson. Get away from that piano. But, Mr. Benny, I want to rehearse the song I'm going to do on the program. That's why I've got the sportsman quartet with me. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Dennis, can't I hear the song later? No, the boys have to leave. All right, go ahead. I'll listen to it now. Come on. <laughs> Would you mind repeating that? <laughs> oh, the owner told Clarence the clocker. The clocker told Jockey McGee. The jockey, of course, passed it on to the horse, and the horse told me. You know, it's funny, but everybody seems to be having trouble picking winners. The other day I was at Santa Anita, and a friend of mine came up to me and said, Am I mortified? He said to me, In the big handicap, there's a positive snap. Just go bet on a horse called the Sheik. He'll walk off with the crown. Why, he'd have to fall down. By the way, that's what happened last week. What a catastrophe. Oh, the owner told Clarence the clocker, the clocker told Jockey McGee. The jockey, of course, passed it on to the horse, and the horse told me. And then I met another friend of mine. Ah, hello there, old boy, he said to me. I had 20 across with no chance for a loss. I figured I'd already won. But the horse threw a shoe and had a bellyache too. And besides, was just in for the run. Oh, the owner told Clarence the clocker. The clocker told Jockey McGee. The jockey, of course, passed it on to the horse and the horse told me. Who, oh, me? Why, I've sworn off the nags. All those bang tails are bags. They run without reason or rhyme. 
So I quit, I am through. Ah, yes, I know you can quit too. Why, I've quit at least 10,000 times. Ah, the honor for Clarence the Clocker. The Clocker told Jackie McGee. The jockey, of course, passed it on to the horse. Ah, yes. And the horse, he told me. How do you do? There's a sleeper, they say, in the fourth race today. It's a filly called Rockaway Rose. She comes on with a voice, and she'll win if she's voice. But at least she'll be third if she shows. <laughs> <laughs> Silly whore. <laughs> The clocker, the clocker told Jockey McGee. The jockey, of course, passed it on to the horse, and the horse told me. Dennis? Dennis, that new song is swell. It'll be fine on the program. Now, Professor, let's get on I'm with... going home now and catch up on some sleep. <laughs> what? On account of daylight saving time, I had to get up at one o'clock in the morning and drive my mother downtown. Why? She had to change the big clock on Eastern Columbia Broadway at night. <laughs> Personally, I'm all confused by this daylight saving time. You what? I'm more confused by this daylight saving time. Dennis, don't worry about it. Lots of people here in Los Angeles are confused. But you know why we turn our clocks ahead, don't you? Yeah, it'll give us an extra hour of smog. <laughs> oh, Mr. Benny, before I leave, would you like to buy a life insurance policy? What? I say, before I leave, would you like to buy a life insurance policy? A life insurance policy? Yeah, somebody stole it to me and I don't want it. <laughs> Look, kid, I, I don't know what kind of a policy you got, but why don't you want it? Well, it doesn't pay off until I'm an old man. <laughs> well, why do you want to sell it to me? Well, you can collect on it now. <laughs> Dennis, go home, will you? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Benny, please... Let us call the lesson, Finney. No, 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 Professor. I want to be perfect when I start my personal appearance tour. With this tour you are making, how many places will you appear in? Oh, 21 different cities. Oh, then that should take up the your entire summer. No, no, Professor. I'm going to appear only one night in each city. That I can understand. <laughs> <laughs> now, come on. Practice, practice. Okay, maybe I better try my theme song. Huh? I think that'll be good enough. Oh, darn it. Mr. Benny, put down the violin for one minute. I want to talk to you. Uh-huh. Sit down, please. Yes, sir. What is it, Professor? Maybe if I explain this in a way that you are familiar with, you will understand. All right. All right, Professor. Go ahead. Now, look. Have you got a Lucky Strike cigarette? Yes, yes. Good. Now, put it in your mouth, and I will light it for you. Thank you. Now, let me explain. Mm -hmm. People should get the same pleasure from a violin as you are getting from that lucky strike. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. If your bow arm is free and easy on the draw, mm -hmm. your tones will be round and firm. Yes, no And cry. if your tones are round and firm, the theaters will be fully packed. <laughs> Say, say, that's right. And another thing, Monsieur Benny, when you play the violin, think of a lucky strike, smooth and mild. Uh-huh. And remember, in a lucky, there is never a rough puff. That, that's right, that's right, there isn't. So in your violin, there should never be a stinker clinker. <laughs> I'll remember that, Professor. Thank you. Now continue, please. Yes, yes, Professor. Oh, 
Oh, it's that door again. Rochester! Rochester! Oh, Mary! I'll get it, Jack! Hello, Miss Livingstone. Why, Mr. Kitzel. <laughs> Livingston, is Mr. Benny home? Yes, he's in his den taking a violin lesson. Oh, bless his heart. <laughs> you know, a man who wants to improve himself musically he has a wonderful ambition. For instance, you take my nephew, Patrick. Now, Patrick... <laughs> Oh, you have a nephew named Patrick? There was a mix-up in the hospital. <laughs> oh, I see. And your nephew is a musician? Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> That's your boy. is a one-man band. No. Yeah, the best one-man band in the country. With his mouth, he plays the harmonica. With his left hand, he plays the xylophone. With his right hand, he plays the piano. And with his left foot, he plays the drum. <laughs> well, what does he do with his right foot? Turns the music. He has long toes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Kitzel, you're joking. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> But seriously speaking, Miss Livingston, Patrick is a great musician. In fact, he wrote that new song, which is today on the hit parade. Uh, what song is that? If I knew you were coming, I'd have pickled a herring. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, Mr. Kitzel, the title is If I Knew You Were Coming, I'd Have Baked a Cake. This is a different song entirely. <laughs> Well, look, Miss Livingston, since Mr. Benny is taking a violin lesson, I don't want to bother him because when Mr. Benny plays the violin, it is so beautiful, I get goose pimples. <laughs> I break out in a rash. Oh. <laughs> Miss Livingston, you're joking. Oh, my. <laughs> I got to be getting myself along. Please tell Mr. Heifetz I was here. <laughs> and give the gentleman my best regards. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Ketzel. <laughs> Mary, Mary, who was that? Mr. Ketzel, but he left. Oh. Mr. Benny, please. Oh, now, Professor... I'm sure that I've got my violin solo down pat for my stage show, but what do you think I should play for an encore? Mr. Benny, I would not worry about an encore. <laughs> huh? Just take your money and go. <laughs> hmm. Now let us go back to the exercises. Okay. Oh, Jack! Jack! Oh, for heaven's sake, what now? Well, Jack, that fellow who stopped you on the street a few weeks ago is at the back door. The fellow stopped me on the street? Oh, yes, that's the fellow who asked me for a dime, but I gave him 50 cents. <laughs> well, Mary, tell him I'm... Oh, I'll go talk to him. Excuse me, Professor. There's no business like show business like show. Oh, hello there, Mr. Mr. Savoni. John L. C. Savoni. <laughs> oh, yes, I, I keep forgetting your name. Oh, what do you want? Well, I haven't eaten all day, and I thought maybe you'd give me a meal. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Savoni, but I don't think we've got any food in the house right now. That's funny. As I come up the walk, I heard someone plucking a chicken. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. I don't mind helping a fella out, but why don't you try earning some money? Have you ever thought, of, thought about getting a job? Oh, sure. Only this morning while I was shaving, the mirror said, Hey, you. I said, who? The mirror said, you. I said, me? The mirror said, yeah. <laughs> You go out and get a job, you lazy, no-good loafer. Now to me, those are fighting words. <laughs> but I wasn't fool enough to start anything. 
the guy in the mirror had a razor in his hand. <laughs> Look, look, mister. Then I realized, holy smoke, it was me. <laughs> Mr. Savoni, do you mean to say that you've never done any work? Oh, once I had a job. I was a nutcher at the Burbank Theater for two years. Well, why did you quit? I didn't quit. My flashlight burned up and I got lost. <laughs> But I'm glad I'm not there anymore. Every time the girls come on, it made me so nervous. <laughs> well, Mr. Silvoli, <laughs> here's some change. Go get yourself something to eat. Gee, thanks, Mr. Benny. No wonder your picture is on the cover of Look Magazine. Oh, oh you saw it too? Yeah. I would just hang around the corner drugstore. <laughs> I just hang around. I wasn't doing anything. Just hang around. I didn't feel like doing anything. So I just hang around. All of a sudden, I look at the magazine counter and I said, Holy smoke! Look at that picture. I know that guy. That's Jack Benny. He gave me 50 cents. The drugger said, What? I said, that Jack Benny gave me 50 cents. <laughs> and that's when it happened. <laughs> what, what happened? All the bottles fell off the shelves. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Savoni, I'm taking a violin lesson, so go get yourself something to eat. Okay, goodbye, pal. <laughs> Gee, but he's a strange guy. Mr. Benny, please, I haven't got all day. Oh, yes. <laughs> gentlemen, one of our great national hazards is fire. Each year, more than 10,000 people lose their lives in fires, and in nine cases out of ten, these fires were caused by carelessness. Be sure it doesn't happen to you. Put that match or cigarette out before you discard it. Take every precaution you can to prevent fires. Thank you. <laughs> Jack will be back in just a moment, but first... In a cigarette, mildness means enjoyment, and scientific tests Prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarettes. These scientific tests are confirmed by independent consulting laboratories, and they prove Lucky Strike mildest of six major brands tested. And no wonder. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And LSMFT, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. So for a milder tasting cigarette with never a rough puff, Smoke a Lucky. You'll enjoy the smooth, rich taste of Lucky's fine tobacco. You'll prove to yourself what scientific tests prove. Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarettes. Yes, the next time you buy cigarettes, ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Frankie Fontaine, who played the part of Mr. Silvoni, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Meanwhile, come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Do you start your personal appearance tour in Pasadena? Yes, yes, that's right, Pasadena. What night? Uh, Wednesday night, May 10th. Where is it going to be held? In the Pasadena Civic Auditorium. Thank you. Uh, by the way, who are you? I'm the fellow you hired to ask you these questions. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. Good night, Good night. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Annis Mandy Show that follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.